Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our award session. The Millennium Alliance is thrilled to present our 2020 CISO Innovator of the Year Award. And we're especially excited for this session because we are also joined by Millennium Alliance thought leader, Carrie Pearlson. She's the executive director of a research group at MIT called Cybersecurity at MIT Sloan. So she'll be here to do a bit of a deep dive conversation with our award winner. So this was obviously such a crucial time for innovation and technology. And as you've likely seen throughout our event so far, we've had some fantastic executives that were nominated for these awards. And we're, we're quite lucky to be working with each and every one of you. Of course, there could only be one winner. So here we go. He was originally recruited to the automotive industry in 1989 and has since held many leadership positions within Ford Motor Company. He currently leads cybersecurity spanning enterprise, cloud, and vehicle mo and mobility within Ford's information technology division. He's the chief information security officer, Patrick Milligan. Patrick, thank you for being here and for accepting our CISO Innovator of the Year Award. Thank you. Um, um, very appreciative. Uh, always great to get the consideration and uh, um, humbling uh, to receive the award. I um, want to congratulate all the fellow finalists as well. I'm sure it could have gone to um, any one of us. Um, our, our challenges within the industry are consistent and um, we're all dealing with the same thing. So um, again, very thankful, very appreciative and, and uh, um, here in 1989, when you say it seems so long ago, doesn't it? <laughs> I should have asked you permission. No, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> well, Patrick, thank you so much for being here. Carrie, I'm going to pass it on to you and let you take it away. Well, thank you, Kara. Patrick, congratulations. What an honor to receive uh, this award and for me to have the chance to chat with you about sort of how you got here. So, congratulations. Maybe you could start you. us out by uh, telling us a little bit about how, what, what has been your journey to the CISO role? How did you end up being the CISO at Ford Motor Company? Um, uh, yeah, a very, very interesting journey. And I guess taking it back to 89, as we just heard. So I've been with the company about, you know, 32 years. Um, uh, second go around in the CISO role, interestingly enough, I, I, I moved into um, the president engagement um, in early 2020, uh, right before we're in the midst of the global pandemic. But uh, I was prior in the role back in uh, the early 2000s. And you want to talk about a different time. Um, uh, there were no iPhones. Uh, AWS didn't exist. Uh, uh, just di different time, different challenges. But, um, you know, the risks. Uh, that we all have to deal with um, continue to be amazingly consistent. But um, across that time frame and forward, wow, been, been in a number of areas. Actually, they hired in as an engineer and into one of our production facilities coming into the company and have since been in manufacturing, manufacturing engineering, product development, and, uh, and IT. But I've probably spent the last um, half of my career in the IT organization doing doing a number of roles. It's, you know, one of the great things working for a company like Ford, there's the breadth and scope of opportunities available to you are pretty significant, but I um, uh, feel fortunate to be in the position I'm in, but yeah, that's how I kind of wound up moving back into the role. So you, you not only know how to be the chief information security officer, you have prior experience, which a lot of other CISOs don't have that, that benefit. Uh, but you also know how the how the the, the cars are made uh, as an engineer and as an IT person. Um, what what do you find so interesting for you in being the chief information security officer? What are some of the unique challenges you're you're seeing in this role that um, that you could share with me? Um, wow! And again, these are not uh, consistent to Ford or even our automotive industry, et cetera. But the uh, um, uh, you know, potential monetization of data services, um, uh, leveraging data to make people li people's lives um, uh, better. There's just so much opportunity in that, but um, along with that opportunity becomes uh, great responsibility for 
um, both privacy and security of not only um, the individuals themselves, um, uh, but of their data and and what those services um, bring to the table in terms of potential risks uh, to those individuals. So I, that's the most compelling thing about it, the most challenging thing about it. It is just at the forefront of what's going on um, in this information age and the, uh, the, the, the opportunity to be a part of it is, uh, uh, it's a privilege. Um, so that, that's what makes it interesting. And then the other thing about this industry is it is, it is one of the, um, uh, I would consider few spaces where it is just absolutely impossible to, um, stay stationary, to stand still, to think, um, you have reached a, a, a level where you've got a good handle on something and can really just, you know, kind of flatline in execution mode. It, it, it is a constantly um, evolving environment, um, whether you're dealing with um, uh, individual threat actors or whether you're dealing with advancing technologies and, and what people want to do with um, connectivity and data, it, 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 you just have to be in a constant mode of learning and improving your skills to, um, uh, to be able to remain viable and, and to, to, to satisfy the requirements of the role in the organization and in, in delivering security solutions and services to, to the company and to our employees. So it's just an incredible challenge. I, I'd like to dive into both of those, actually. Let's talk a minute about the new technologies. I mean, you you said you were a CISO twice now, and you've seen so many changes in the technologies that people use, but cars themselves have become platforms. Your, your car is not just the vehicle to transport you from here to there, but also it's got all sorts of information services in it now that it didn't used to have. So I, it sounds like you might have some unique cyber challenges because of that kind of, of dealing with that kind of platform. And then we've also got the autonomous vehicle technologies coming out um, in the future, hopefully, which must be presenting a whole nother set of cyber challenges. Anything you could talk about from uh, from either of those perspectives? Um, so I can't get into uh, an incredible level of detail, um, but yes, your 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 points are spot on. The, um, uh, the level of vehicle connectivity um, that is available within industry today is uh um it's astounding really um and the way industry um is kind of coalescing around treating uh your vehicle as an asset similar to um uh your phone for instance and providing uh ongoing software updates um that will continually improve the the capabilities of a product you may have, have purchased previously is one of the big drivers behind um, uh, the whole goal of vehicle services and delivering capabilities to, to consumers that they just haven't had in this industry before. Um, so that is uh, uh, a common opportunity across industry and, and who delivers against that in the most effective and secure way is is obviously going to have um, tremendous success, and then you you evolve that into the autonomous vehicle space that you you um, uh, you inquired about. If you really look where that's going, and and in true level five autonomy, where you could be getting in a you know a shared vehicle with no vehicle controls in it, et cetera. Um, uh, the the <laughs> the landscape of privacy and security challenges in that space then becomes exponentially greater. You know, it's not your um, individual vehicle anymore. This could be a shared shared fleet vehicle that you are taking advantage of to, to get some level of autonomous services to get from point A to point B. Um, but to do that, it's got to know who you are, where you want to go. It's going it, to, I mean, that, that, that mode is going to know all sorts of information about you as an individual that, again, you're getting into the privacy and security concerns associated with that. Um, safety concerns of the vehicle itself, if it's fully autonomous with no vehicle controls in it, et cetera. It's just the, the whole space, man, when you, when you start getting your, your head around it, it just gets back to my prior comment. The ongoing challenge and opportunity to, to, 
to be able to be a part of this and deliver these services to industry is just it's a uh, it's a very unique opportunity obviously we're in a incredibly competitive market for getting the software talent to be able to deliver against this but it's a it's a uh, it's a great challenge to be a part of sounds like it's a fascinating area and and one of the fastest growing for sure especially when we start to think about all the technology that has to go into an autonomous vehicle to make it work i hadn't even thought about the fleet side i was thinking about the individual side but then you start adding the fleet side or the taxis or the public you know shared vehicles i can see where the information requirements uh just start to uh, uh, explode exponentially grow so um let's talk about uh uh the other topic you brought up which is staying current you know being a, a constantly changing environment where you personally have to keep on top of not just the technologies that your company and your industry have but just in cybersecurity, the constantly changing landscape of threats the constantly changing landscape of of uh, technologies um, how do you do that? What, what, what do you personally do to stay current? Um, so on a personal level, and, and again, this is, uh, to my prior comments, just, uh, um, uh, it's a challenge. Uh, I do it personally um, by uh, having the benefit of um, a broad team of uh, technical, technical experts, subject matter experts that are um, uh, not only driving capabilities within Ford, but in many cases, uh, leading industry viewpoints around a lot of this stuff, um, having the opportunity to spend time with them, uh, to deep dive a number of these topics, uh, to learn from them, um, uh, is my single biggest way of attempting um, uh, to keep up with this, but, uh, you know, if I'm honest, it's, uh, to, considering the breadth of, of what we deal with, it, it would be, um, uh, probably, uh, very unrealistic to think you, you are having the ability to keep up with all of it. At, at this point, you have to have a, um, uh, a dedicated and effective team empowered to deliver these capabilities and you have to trust that team and and leverage them as much as you can to to continue your own personal learning but then make sure they have the capabilities available to them uh, whether that be time money training um to keep themselves at a level of expertise in the field that that allows them to be successful sounds like you have a fantastic team behind you i do I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you without them. This is this has nothing to do with me. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I love that you're that the team is 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 really important. And we know in cybersecurity that one person can't keep us all secure. It really is not just a team effort, but perhaps a whole company effort. Um, one of the topics I, I'd love to explore with you is how you keep the whole company cyber secure. You know, I mean you as a CISO can have responsibility, I guess the buck stops on your desk for making sure that things are secure, but you don't have your finger on every keyboard. Everybody in the company has their fingers on a keyboard. So how do you build a culture of cybersecurity for uh, the folks in Ford? What, what are some of the things you've done to make sure everybody knows what they have to do and that they do it? Yeah, um, no, 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 you know, silver bullet here. We, we are doing the same things. Um, uh, everybody else is, I'm sure, um, whether that begins with um, Cybersecurity Awareness Month, um, just making sure you take the time to have, uh, whether it be focus training, group training, um, uh, social media type forums to share information, um, you know, as we moved into the um, uh, the working environment we all had to go into as part of the global pandemic. Um, you can just imagine the um, the technology challenges people had associated with that, um, the ability to bring up forums to um, not only share general information, but be able to, to, to take very detailed technical questions, help people resolve those, um, particularly as it gets into, um, you know, security of not only the company, but of our employees and, and work environments they, they weren't normally in. Um, that level of engagement and communication is really the 
um, probably one of the, the key avenues of trying to instill a, a, a culture of security. Um, uh, one of the other areas we're focusing on is, um, you know, really turning uh, security into an, an enabler of this whole digital transformation and, and um, the, the environments we're all operating under, uh, you know, making it a, an avenue of success and not necessarily a, you know, something that gets in the way of, of, uh, uh, of what a lot of our skill teams or other business partners are trying to do. So, um, and, and, and really just trying to, trying to hone in on the message of individual accountability. And again, it's not just for the company, it's to, it's to, it's for our employees to protect themselves individually. I mean, everybody's seen the same thing as it, it, within the pandemic, just the, um, the level of attempted, attempted compromise of individuals, whether that be via phishing or, 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 or other avenues is just, it's exponentially skyrocketed. It is the single biggest threat vector. And, um, you know, that's not only a risk to our companies, but to, to our, our individual employees. And that's, you know, trying to get that message to them and trying to help them uh, do everything, everything they can in that regard is probably the secret to the whole, um, the whole culture conversation. Well, that's, that's amazing. Um, certainly getting everybody lined up is really important. And I love that you're focusing both on individual accountability and helping people feel personally secure, not just securing the company. Can you talk about a story or an initiative that comes to mind of something that was particularly successful? I'm sure our audience would love some ideas of things they could specifically do that, uh, that you found success with. Anything come to mind? Um, yeah, I can share one. I probably did. I probably did previously. So apologies if people have heard this in other forums, but, uh, you know, one of the biggest, um, um, challenges and opportunities that, that does, you know, specifically fall into what you just asked. Yeah. You can imagine when, when we were all working in the office, we had, um, we practice the same defense in depth and everything else that everybody else does, but you know, you, you have some level of perimeter perimeter security within your within your corporate walls and we had a lot of capabilities in place that our employees um, benefited from while they were in the Ford office um, again not just for the company but um, personal protections of um, you know against identity theft or of going to sites that you know could potentially put some malware spyware any sort of those threats you, you had you, you got benefit of protection from those inside the forward walls when we went to the you know remote work environment as part of the global pandemic where you were working remotely all the time and um in a lot of instances weren't even connecting to the forward network just leveraging public public internet you know um your home home internet connections whether it be to go to office 365 etc um, all of a sudden those protections weren't in place, not necessarily for the company, but for you as a, you know, who knows, you could have had your kids at home, homeschooling, they're sitting on your company asset doing something. And, you know, we have to, we had took consideration of our employees as well. So, um, we did implement, a, a, a lot of protections on our Ford assets to, to kind of recreate those protections, even when you weren't connected to the Ford network. So, um, uh, took a lot of effort by again a lot of great people in the company, not just in in cyber, but in in other organizations of the company to to get that out there quickly. Um, again, not so much for the company, to, but but to protect our employees um, while they were um, dealing with a, a whole range of issues, not all of which included you know um, their job with Ford Motor Company. So. Um, it was a great success story, something we, you know, we might not necessarily have have considered doing, if not for the environment we were all put in as part of the global pandemic. But, you know, again, getting back to that ongoing lessons learned, what, what a change in um, operating philosophy and thinking we've all gone through as a result of, hey, if, if this could happen to all of us, um, uh, you know, there's a whole range of other things that could that could impact us as individuals or industries as well that, you know, it really opened up the level of thinking into what do we want to do going forward? Um, 
you know, being able to to deliver that flexibility to our workforce, but while also, you know, again, providing that security and privacy to everybody and just attempting to, um, you know, to do what's right for, for individuals and people. Yeah, it's fascinating. Thank you for sharing that story. Um, you also mentioned uh, the, the role or the importance of everybody being kind of aligned. What do the other C-level executives do to help drive cybersecurity? I mean, again, you're the driver, you're the, the perhaps the visionary, the architect, but you can't, as you said, you can't do it alone. And your other C-level colleagues must have some role in this. What, what do they do? Maybe you have a specific story of something somebody did at the C-level that helped drive this uh, commitment to cybersecurity. <laughs> um, yes, but I don't know that I'm going to share any of those stories. <laughs> you can make um, it anonymous. We uh, won't guess. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tie it back to your your culture comment. I mean, the C-suite executives, it, it's just all part of the same company culture. Um, you know, uh, I'll, I'll just tie it to the to just the situation that's um, uh, so top of mind um, across industries today. I mean, whether you go with um, uh, solar winds or continental pipeline, it's a the, just the level of um, attention um, and exposure. Um, that is now, you know, um, leading to government level intervention and, and action um, that has got the attention of everybody. Um, and it has served to, uh, I'll just say, re energize um, uh, C level leadership, attention, um, motivations. Not that it wasn't there before. Uh, but the lo level of activity going on, again, across industries, whether healthcare, energy, uh, just it's occurring everywhere. And um, it, it honestly is a um, global challenge for all of us to deal with it. And that's what's really going to drive the engagement of um, executives right on down the line. Yeah, yeah. Getting getting your C level. I mean, everybody's so busy, and of course, C level executives have such wide uh, and deep agendas. Getting their focus on security must be a real challenge. You mentioned another topic. I would love to uh, just ask you a question about, and you you mentioned security as an enabler for digital transformation within Ford. What do you mean by that? How do you make how do you make security an enabler? <laughs> uh, I wish I knew the answer. <laughs> completely right now um but just in terms of uh um an analogy the, the, and so many times um uh the cyber function the security function um can be seen as uh i don't know bureaucratic drag um can be seen as uh um roadblocks of you got a, a, a given um, business partner or skill team who wants to do uh, just keeping it generic. I've, I've got a, I've got a project. I want to, I want to do X, Y, Z and, and um, you know, deal with this information in, in certain ways and whether it be um, policy or um, uh, capability um, issues that would have previously led a, a cyber function to say, well, you know, you know no, you're not going to do that. Um, you, you have to shift the conversation of there's intrinsic business value to whatever is being considered. I mean, as a, as within your company, as an ongoing entity, there, there's a reason that, that um, uh, something wants to be done. And from a security perspective, it can't just be, well, no, you're not going to do that. It, it has to be turned into an, an enabling function of, yes, um, uh, we're all aligned that we do need to do this, and now we need to find a way to do it um, uh, while ensuring we're living up to whether it be the security or privacy principles we hold as an organization and as a company and, and that we, you know, uh, that we share with our consumers. 
that's what I kind of meant by enabling. It, it can't just be a, nope, you're not going to do that anymore. We're, we are part of the solution. We're all part of the bigger um, uh, organizational component of, of, of successfully delivering um, the expected outcomes that, that will, um, and again, go into the mission of Ford Motor Company that, that are really going to improve people's lives. That's what's at the heart of it. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, one of the projects I've been looking at is how cybersecurity might be viewed as a strategic or maybe competitive advantage. And that that sort of sparked the idea um, when you said that you got to turn the conversation from overhead to one of, you know, business value and contributing to the, the whole. Do you see cybersecurity or organizations that can somehow demonstrate that they have a strong security posture? especially in today's day and age, uh, making that a, a, a strategic advantage for them? Would, would, would you buy something if you thought it was more secure than a competitor's just because it was more secure? Um, you know, it gets into, that gets into personal preference. You know, everybody has different views of, of, of um, uh, different situations, potentially, or especially as you, you know, deal with generational differences. Um, my kids do things that I would, I would just never do. Um, Mine too. <laughs> so it's, you know, there's that, there's that, there's that spectrum. It's, that's a different answer for, for different people. Um, um, uh, I would say anybody who, who is um, uh, concerned or pays attention to uh, security or privacy would absolutely take, take the, um, or lean in the direction of, yeah, if you've got a, um, a competitive advantage in, in, in securing a given environment, you know, it would make, make a lot of sense. You know, if you draw a correlation in our industry of, you know, is safety important? It, I would say everybody is yeah. aligned. Absolutely. That safety is important. I think, I think you're going to find security go the same, same way. So, so what do you see as coming down the pipe um, in the security industry that you think is really promising? A technology or a capability or an initiative? What, what do you see as uh, for next year, perhaps, uh, that you're very excited about that uh, in the security industry in general? Not necessarily what Ford's doing, but something you're looking forward to that holds some promise for you. Um, so I'll go, I'll go broader. It's not just for me, and it's obviously not just... Um, for our industry, et cetera, just the whole, and it, it, it's a continuation of, of where all of this has been going um, in terms of um, connectivity and services and, and things that are enabled to, um, uh, and I'll go back to just I improving all of our lives, whether those be conveniences, services, et cetera. Um, the, the pace of those is just, uh, accelerating accelerating at an exponential rate um and the opportunity to the um uh security industry especially um is is an intrinsic part of doing that in a in a safe and secure um bastion for all of us as consumers um you know it, it, that can be anything from uh, from your vehicle, uh, could be your refrigerator. It, it just, it, this level of connectivity is, is everywhere. Um, and the potential for database convenience or, or business services is just it, the, the pace is going to continue to accelerate. So we we're almost out of time. Let me ask you my favorite last question, which is what advice do you have for your peers? Um, uh, as you look at where things are going, what's the, what's one of the most important things, or maybe you could give me two, if you wanted that you would tell no, a, a CISO yeah. to, to do, to be prepared for what's, what's coming down the pipe. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's one that stands out above all others. And I already kind of touched on in the conversation, um, surround yourself with a team of people that are, um, uh, far more capable than, than yourself. Um, Enable them, empower them, um, give them everything they need to be successful, and and uh, that success will wear off on you individually. But yeah, it's all about it's all about um, uh, 
uh, the team you build around yourself. Great. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for uh, your time today and for letting me ask you all these really interesting questions and for your very insightful answers. Thank you and congratulations yeah, again on your award. Yeah, thank you. Re really appreciate it and uh, en enjoyed spending the time with you. This was great. Patrick, Kerry, yeah. thank you both so much. That was a fantastic conversation and I'm sure a lot of these topics will be touched upon uh, throughout the rest of the event. So thank you both again and Patrick, congratulations. Thank you. Really appreciate it.